serious games. Researchers are tapping the combined abilities of the web community. Users play games to help solve science problems. British astrophysicist Chris Lintott researches distant galaxies. He recently faced the problem of sorting about a million of them by type. The job is too complex for a computer. So Lintott asked his colleague Kevin Shavinsky to do it. Kevin had looked at 50,000 of these galaxies. It was a terrible month, I think, in which he did nothing but look at galaxies um, and had shown that humans by far and away beat computers, but we had a million galaxies. Kevin wasn't very keen to look at another 950,000, and so we had the idea of putting them on the web and calling for help. But how do you get hobby astronomers involved? The solution was an online game called Galaxy Zoo. Players have to classify galaxies by type and color. They've processed several hundred million so far. Such collective efforts are called serious games. Institutions around the world have launched similar projects. The National Archive of Finland mobilized tens of thousands of users to digitalize its historical newspaper collection, and they didn't even have to learn Finnish. They just had to type the right letters to bring star-crossed mole lovers together. A computer figured out the rest by averaging the submitted answers. The University of Washington's biology game, Fold It, was the smash success of 2011. For years, HIV researchers had been trying to decode a certain protein. Tens of thousands of players working together did it in a few days. A sophisticated computer program evaluates the various attempts, but only human beings can tackle complex three-dimensional tasks like this. Sebastian Deterding of Hamburg University has studied serious games. Computers aren't that good at recognizing patterns, but people are fabulous at it. For instance, picking up voices out of a general hum of noise and things like that. It took us humans a long time to acquire that ability, but now it's automatic for us. We've learned to do it so well that we're no longer conscious of it. For the past four years, software developer Christian Manteuffel has spent his free time exploring the universe with other hobby astronomers on Galaxy Zoo. To an amateur astronomer, it's really fascinating to have the possibilities Galaxy Zoo offers for finding things that no astronomer, not even people who deal with this every day, has ever seen before. Computers are not curious by nature, but hobby scientists are. Sometimes they can point the researchers towards something new. Christian Manteuffel and other users spotted odd green dots in some of the galaxy pictures. Upon investigation, it turned out they had discovered a previously unknown type of galaxy. Discoveries like these are made on human intuition, and that's something that can't yet be programmed. Chris Lintott is well aware of that, so his team developed several more games after Galaxy Zoo. They can be found on the online platform Zooniverse. Nearly a million users take part. On Ancient Lives, for instance, they help to decipher ancient papyruses. On old weather, they analyze historical logbooks. Science profits from citizen science in a really simple way. We get more science. That changes science because it lets us do new things, but it changes the people as well. It gives them a real sense that science isn't something that belongs to academics like me, but something that belongs to them because they can take part in it and they can make discoveries themselves. Serious Games benefits both the makers and the players. They open up the world of science for everyone. Shift says it's great to game and do something useful at the same time.